Dunwall is changing fast. Six months ago, Draper's ward was where Dunwall's rich and well-born strolled and shopped and tried to be seen. The plague burned through it in days. Today, it's a battleground where two street gangs fight over the spoils. The Hatters and Lizzie's gang, the Dead Eels. Lizzie Stride was the boss until Edgar Wakefield betrayed her and took her place. And the Riverboat. It's the kind of thing that happens every day in Dunwall. I don't judge him. I've done worse myself. Fair. But I need that boat. Mm. Edgar Wakefield and I have business. It ain't personal, that's for sure. So I went back for that second bone charm. Ended up being world win. So no one really cares about that. Also, um, obviously didn't go back for the corrupt charm because it was still in that cell. So, uh, new upgrade available, baffle dust. Okay, what does baffle dust do? Changes chemical composition of Chokoda, so it induces short-term confusion. Victims will resume normal, unsuspecting activity after exposure to this dust. Oh, that's interesting, actually. Uh, I don't have that much coin, though, so I have to be careful. Uh, what do I want? Let's take a look at the favors first. Former Rothwold labor laborer. A laborer you saved from the jail cell in Rothwold's slaughterhouse has some useful information for you. Meet him at the textile min mill. Okay. Oh, that's only 75. That's not bad. I can take that. The hidden rune, obviously. A tunnel dweller has been bribed to bring a rune from the depths of the Dunwall storm drains and place it within reach of the surface. And the sunken crate. Allied whalers will dump a crate loaded with supplies overboard near the Und Undine. You will have to dive to retrieve the contents. Yes, please. That's a little too expensive. Same with the improved armor. Uh, I really want that boot stealth, but I can't afford it right now. So... That's the most important thing. I do have a rewire tool, which I found near the end of the last mission. Uh, so I'll take another one just in case. And I guess we're good. Hello. The textile mill used to run off a water wheel before the canal went dry. It started up again recently, and whatever the Hatters did to get it working has enraged the dead eels. They're fighting in the streets. Oh, good. So in other words, don't be seen. Got it. Let's just avoid. Ah, shit. Too much need to do. Fall back to the river. You ain't a real gang. You're just a bunch of mudlarks. I took too long. I'll let them kill each other. It's fine. Ah. Thanks. I admit, I'm stymied. I thought dragging it up out of the mud was a hard part. But I had no idea. Look at that thing. You think hammers will break it open? Explosives. Ah, safe. Sure. The sound brings everyone running. Then we gotta share. 
And what if it costs some meals, huh? Mm, there point. must be a way. I think we could be in there. You know what would be funny? If it wasn't locked. What? Of course it's locked. Look at it. You mean you haven't even tried it. What do you think I am? Stupid? Oh, there is a key required. Okay. So you're right. It was locked. Hello, friend. As instructed by your whalers, I've dredged this horrid thing from the depths of the storm drains and placed it in the agreed-upon location in hopes that you, and only you, recover it. But be warned, poor fortune has followed me every step of the way since laying hands on this thing, and I am overjoyed at the prospect of leaving it here and being done with it. May it treat you better than it has me. And if some unlucky local has stumbled upon this wicked bone, heed these two warnings. As I have said above, poor fortune will find you. But more importantly, this is intended for delivery to the most dangerous man in the Empire. If you are in possession of something he wants, you may count your remaining hours on one hand. Well, also... Splintering bolts? Uh, benefit. Bolts shot from your wi uh, wrist bow do much more damage. Penalty. Bolts almost always break on contact when shot at enemies. So we're not gonna use that? Oh god, there's three of them here. Shit. Oh, there's a rune up there too. Shit. Um. Quiet. What's the password? I seem to have forgotten it. Nice try, River Rat. Get lost. Well, shit. What the? Ah! So there seems to only be one way to get in. We burns are still themselves. Do they even know what's happening to them? I hope not. Never thought of that. What if they're asking for help? They probably and are. Running away or throwing rocks. I mean, more than likely than not, they probably are asking for help. Keep an eye out. We got company. How the fuck do you know? I didn't do anything. It's all you guys. Come on, go back inside. Oh boy. Try for mommy, you little piss pot. Someone's dying out there. Hello, Griff. I hope your business is doing well. If you are interested, I have a little business proposal for you. The canal here in Draper's Ward has been dry for some time now. Enough time for the prized ox rush to take bloom in the mud. None of the ruffians patrolling this area know how special the flower can be, so I have no competition in harvesting them, but none of the alchemists or natural philosophers that can use them frequent this district anymore. Perhaps I can send you some bunches of ox rush to peddle for a commission, of course, and I can help you tap into an ammunition market here in Draper's Ward. The gangs have gone into full-scale war, so demand is high. Let me know your thoughts. From Jerome. We're losing business. I understand doing what's got to be done. But Wakefield... Lizzie kept to a deal. Yeah, she made nice. She wanted no shit. Exactly. After last night, I don't know who's going to buy from us. What? What the... Somebody f get over Oh, balls. This post is awful. I almost broke my neck getting up here. And all day the hatters keep taking shots at me like I'm some kind of carnival game. This morning I saw some lady up on the glass roof across the canal and it kind of has me worried. I think she looked right at me. 
How'd she get up there? Are the Hatters recruiting ladies now? Anyway, since she's been up there, I can barely make out this thing she left behind. Can't tell what it is from here, but come nightfall, I might just climb up there and have a look. Gotta be wary of that arc pylon they set up down there. They have that kind of gear that's just outmatched. I, just w I wish Lizzie was back. She'd get us out of this. This chapter will focus on the once lavish Draper's Ward, before the reign of the Caldwin Dynasty. The locale held none of the prestige that it has so recently enjoyed. Draper's Ward was once a simple manufacturing hub for fabrics and textiles, exporting raw weaves to all corners of the empire. Water-driven mills turned day and night to meet the needs of the rapidly expanding cloth industries. For decades, Draper's Ward supported a modest trade until key manufacturers began locate, relocating factories to Circonus and Morley. The price of labor in these places was much lower, and the limited av availability of Dunwall Riverfront property, which was required to turn the mills, made expansion of operations impossible. At the end of this period, declining production and abandoned factories created an opportunity for a new generation of skilled and ambitious industrialists. A loose confederation of clothing merchants, including such luminaries as Percy Oliver, Ag Agatha Chesney, and Mortimer Hatt, established a new mo model of business, high-end clothing that was designed to appeal to Dunwall's elite, sold at a substantial markup. The best... The best sartorium... The best sartorial designers from across the Empire were lured to the boutiques of Draper's Ward, where they found themselves freed from the need to solicit patrons. In fact, they were elevated to high society, courted, and pampered. The powerful and influential began to frequent the new Draper's Ward, paying any cost to, see, to be seen in the latest styles. The district was widely successful. Extravagant wealth and luxury among the proprietors and designers became the norm. But not all was as glamour and fun. Reinvented Draper's Ward was an expensive project, and investigations into the so into the sources of capital funding this revitalization often led to dead ends. It was commonly whispered that Mortimer Hatt had been a ruthless gang leader in his early years, and it was a very poor secret among the city watch that he still commanded a private army of hardened men that would protect his interests. A terrible truth emerged over time. While the designers and merchants held court and were exclusive boutiques, the mills and factories that produced the clothing were houses of suffering and abuse. Despite the coin generated by their businesses, the workers who stitched the garments never took part in the flow of wealth. Instead, hats men enforced brutal working conditions on them. As this corruption intensified, with violence occasionally spilling out into the open streets, the well-to-do declined further invitations to shop at the boutiques. Business fell precipitously, and now with rumors of a plague looming on the horizon, the golden age of Draper's Ward may soon be at an end. <sighs> Sadly, I can't even say that this shit doesn't happen today, because it does. And it's sad. So that's the way to the riverfront. Food. Do I not have that one equipped? I could have sworn I had something like that. Spirit water. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, which one do I have? Thank you. My dearest friend, my costume ball will require three tailored outfits that are perfectly matching except for color. We are going to play a game with our guests, you see. I am saddened to hear of your deteriorating hands and the hard times in which you have fallen, as you were my first choice to craft these costumes. I will mention your physical difficulties to my doctor at the party. Perhaps he can be of some service to you. Farewell. Waverly Boyle. Ah, so this is before the... before she goes missing. Ah! 
Why is Emily's uh, outfits or pictures rather in here? And Miss Pillsbury. Ah, hello. Second rune. Utility, you are next. Oh, there's this guy. Hi. I thought I was finished. They'll never believe who saved me. I didn't do nothing. But okay, I guess. I mean, if you want to tell them that doubt saved you, that's that's fine. One more of the <coughs> Oh, if I can get in here, actually, I can. Whoa. A dangerous experiment. I've come across some old writings that hint at a bizarre ritual, and I'm going to use it to prove to you once and for all that all of this mystical stuff is just superstition. When I get back from my mission in the sewers, we'll do this. But there's a trick. You'll need a bride. Ha! Near as I can tell, she doesn't need to be willing. She doesn't need to even be awake. By the outsider's eyes, I don't think she needs to be alive. So you go secure a bride if you can, and I'll officiate this mock wedding. Oh, I see. Well, first, first, that's good. Granny's wedding reception. Nice. Be bring a man to represent my black-eyed groom. Fetch a woman to represent me in my youth. Lay them together in the in the eternal circle. A wedding band to bind them. Placed on the silver tray. Do this for me, dearie, and I'll give you a wedding gift. Okay then. So now I have to bring a, a lady. Okay. So one, two, three. You just had to move, didn't you? You'll do. Done. What else am I supposed to do? Oh, I have to find a wedding ring? A few moments later. Okay, I guess that's it for this for now. Someone on there was someone on that roof. Why else was there a chair there? You don't say. <laughs> ah, wasn't quick enough. Evans, be cautious with this equipment. It's very delicate and requires a skilled touch to operate. It is also quite lethal, so if you do not follow the proper procedures, you will cease to exist in the wink of an eye. Acquiring this technology took a great deal of politi politicking and expense, so I repeat, do not be reckless with it. Once the system is set up and operational, we will never see a dead eel darkening our doorstep. The mill will become an impregnable fortress. Report any technical issues to me from Nurse Trimble. Hello. Oh. And coin. So, yeah, I have to Password go in there. System. The headers are getting organized. Yeah, they are. The Hatters have a secret passage that they use to gain entry to the textile mill that serves as their base. Now we just need a password. One hour later. Well, I guess I'm going uh, on ahead. I know it's a hard man, but he's 
not as fun as Lizzie. Lizzie enjoyed it more. Yeah, even Lizzie never drowned victims in a sack. Oh. You can still see him squirming for air. Yeah. How's he gonna top that? I don't think he is. Uh, the mutineer Edgar Wakefield has drowned a gang member that was loyal to Lizzie and sank him in the river near the Undyne. Okay. Edgar Wakefield is on board the Undine. He's put all of the eels on alert since Lizzie's rumored to have escaped from Coldridge. He's expecting her. You will undoubtedly be a surprise to him. Ooh, I like it. I like being surprising. Uh, Trimble's coin. The halls of the Academy of Natural Philosophy are thought to be spaces where thoughtful discourse and enlightened tolerance sets the tone for debate and learning. It is believed that reason applies above all and the passions of the greatest minds of the empire are tempered by wisdom and custom. This is the commonly accepted vision of the place and it is almost always accurate. Sometimes a protracted debate or disagreement can explode into conflict and very rarely violence. Such was the case years ago in the month of wind. A young apprentice named Piero Joplin ventured into strange new directions of research in the per preservation of mortifying tissue, a field that brought him into frequent conflicts with a student called Trimble. Joplin and Trimble were often debated loudly long into the night, and the content of these arguments was well beyond the understanding of most people of the empire, the author included. Rivalry between the two natural philosophers ragged for months, and it is the climax of those events that prompted this writing. The two had argued deep into the night, the debate sliding into bitter personal attacks. At last, they reached a terrible accord. Their mutual hatred culminated in a duel to the death with pistols. Under the gray sky of dawn, the greatest minds of the, Isle, of the Empire of the Isles gathered in the courtyard in a fashion resembling schoolboy gatherings to watch police fight. A quiet fell as Joplin and Trimble accepted the ceremonial pistols, marked off the paces, and turned and fired. Each combatant fired round after round, scattering windows, chipping masonry, and splitting plaster. So they're terrible shots is what you're saying. The closest shot to the mark was Joplin's, whose bullet ripped through the hem of Trimble's overcoat. It was clear that the dedicated study of the learned men had made for poor marksmanship. When all of their ammunition was expended, both parties stood quivering with fear and rage, but unharmed. It was then agreed that the duel would be settled with a coin flip. A newly minted coin of the Empire was produced, bearing the face of Empress Jessamine Caldwin. As it was sent spinning into the air, Trimble called heads. The coin landed tails. Joplin was declared the winner, and the feuding between the men ceased. By the terms of the dispute, Trimble was forced to leave the academy, his studies left incomplete. Whereupon a dignified silence returned to the halls of the Academy of Natural Philosophy. Agreed. Blow off, Joffer. Oh, notes from a hatter spy. Mr. Hat, there has been interesting activity since our raids in the Dead Eels a few days ago. Looks like Wakefield has been rooting out Lizzie's loyalists and chasing them off or making an example of them with gruesome killings. I don't think he's got much of a hold on his gang, and things are likely to fall to fly apart before long. Also, I swear I saw a woman lurking in some nearby rooftops last night, spying on the eels. She saw me looking at her and just disappeared. Perhaps you'll know what to make of that from Oscar. Uh huh. So I am not imagining it. There is people around. Yep, there she is. Oh, good. She did not fall. Just wait to be ah, she's a brick more witch. Those prints and noise and fancy masks. Strip them of their jewels and set them on fire. Finest time in the world. Weird markings and shit. Statuesque. Uh, there you are. While standing still, you cannot be seen by enemies unless they are in combat with you. And mana does not regenerate. Yeah, no, that's a no-go. You ever see a man set on fire? What does he do? He jumps in the water. Right. Very funny. 
I hear Lord Shaw's making his way to the party by boat, with only two bodyguards. And that's another patron dead. What do we do now? Uh, I it's lucky we're in demand. I hear the Estermonts pay top coin. No use trying them tonight. Let's see if we can find a little brandy. Let the boils clean up the mess. But he's not dead, though. He's he's snoring. You can literally hear him snoring. You guys still have a job. What? How do you hear things like that? I have some connections. Everyone's dies. There's the boat. Wakefield's probably keeping himself below decks. Whatever I do to him, it will be a mercy compared to what Lizzie has in mind. Very true. Wakefield sealed himself in the cargo hold of the Undine. I mean, I figured that. Smuggling ships like this one often have a hatch underneath for dumping contraband if they get caught. Perhaps the Undine is no different. More than likely, yeah. Wouldn't surprise me. Apart from that building, there doesn't seem to be any windows or anything I can take advantage of there, so... Nothing of importance over there, I guess. You ever get that creepy feeling of being watched? had that a bunch lately. Funny you ask that. I had this feeling of eyes on me. I looked up on the roof of that building over there and... There was a lady up there, right? I seen her too. Just stared. Then she was... Gone. In a wink. Yeah. You see the same thing. Yeah, don't worry guys, I dealt with her. Come on. Ah, hi. Cause I I totally fucking missed you. You keep surprising me, Dowd. Not long ago I watched you kill an empress and steal her child for coin. For a man like that, you went through Cold Ridge Prison with an awfully soft uh-huh, and? I wonder, are you hoping it will change the way things work out? Maybe, maybe not. The song's almost over, and when the music stops, we all fall down. I mean, you're absolutely right. However... This isn't about me. Oh god, hagfish. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. Let's try this again. Oh, uh, you're not so stupid, are you? Oh, come on. Got it. Void surge. Sometimes when using power, no mana will be spent. Ooh, I love that. I want it. 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 <sighs> Dowd, this is the second time now. I see something, or someone, out of the corner of my eye. But when I turn, they're gone. Someone is watching us. Yep. I know that. I know they are. I caught one. So there's a rune in there. Oh, it's beyond in there. Shit. What? Okay, so it is in there. Shit. Okay, so that's where I have to go. This is where I want to go. That's a trap. If someone's messing with me, must have been the papers. Come on, spread out. 
Must have been enough. So that was risky. So now I have to swim all the way over and then under, I think. There I go. Okay, here I go. It's going to pieces. I was just getting things under control, but now I hear Lizzie busted out of Coldridge. How? The dead eels are all starting to swing my way, and I even think we'll wipe out those and even and I even think we'll wipe out those accursed hatters soon. Mr. Hat humiliated me something awful with that raid to steal our engine coil, and payback was going to be me taking a piss in his stovepipe. But now that Lizzie's free again, I've got the crew on high alert. Orders to kill anyone that ain't one of us. I'm starting to think I bit off more than I could chew. How'd it come to this? Lizzie's on her way. I just know it. Might as well slit my own throat. The island's dies. She bit off a man's tongue. Just for calling her Elizabeth. Hmm. Time to signal Lizzie. Sound the ship's horn, okay. assuming control of the dead eels now. She's ordered them to give you safe passage. Nice. Your friend Edgar Wakefield set me up to be taken by the City Watch. And you followed him. Took his orders. But you know what? I forgive you. All of you. I'm filled with love. But the following people each owe me a finger. Logan, Douglas, Bang Bang, Ferris, Pigface, the Bakers, and Annabelle. Shit. <laughs> Two <laughs> from you, Annabelle. Have a good night. <laughs> very nice, very nice. What? Uh, are you not going to give her the two fingers? That piece of garbage, Edgar. I'm still living with his incompetence. He let the Hatters cripple the Undine. The ship seems fine to me. They took the engine coil. We're dead in the water. What is it? Can we make a new one? They don't make them anymore. Not for an engine like the Undines. Well. We'll have to get it back. The geezer still leads the Hatter gang, right? I'll pay him a visit. It won't be that easy. There's a snag. Always is. What's this one? The Gazer's about a hundred years old by now. He's got it rigged so that if he dies, the whole place gets gassed. So they're real careful around him. Got him a nurse and everything. Great. Maybe you can cut a deal for that engine coil. Turn on the charm. One of the Hatters gave me their door password in exchange for keeping the rest of his fingers. Ah. Oh. It's whalebone. I never got to use it on account of the gas. And being in jail. Yeah. Just be ready to move. 
when I get back. And that explains why I couldn't find anybody to give me the fucking password. Head back to that little house, drink some water, and then be on my way. A few moments later. What's the password? Whalebone. Come in, Hatter. Sir, the Hatters are using the textile machines to make shrouds for the plague dead. Now we know why they took the engine coil. Yeah. The man who runs the Hatters is more cunning than he looks. He can flood this place with a toxic gas. In time, it'll eat through our air filters. You may have to make a deal. Great. They weren't wearing no clothes. Keep your hat on. I was just asking. Just because you're in charge of the gate, it don't mean the rest of us are idiots. Yeah? Well, since you're such a genius, it ought to be real easy to see who it was. So go check it out. Nice. I don't know why you're worried about nothing. Um. <laughs> Not where I put you. Also not where I put you. Oh well. I guess I put you in here. Fucking hell. Okay, good. Whew! I thought it brained him for a second. Oh, and they have a wall of light too. Nice. <coughs> Any fools settled in over here? Uh, and of course he goes where I want to go, fucker. And fleet fighter. Having your weapons out doesn't slow you down. Come over. Hey. How did it pass me by? Doubt. Didn't think I'd ever see you again. Mm. After you helped us escape the slaughterhouse, I got a job here running the looms. They got us working around the clock, making shrouds for all of the plague victims. Kind of makes me sick. But they have to come from somewhere, I guess. Yeah. How do I get into the engine room? It's down in the basement. But you can't get in without the combination. You gonna tell me it? And where would I find that? Nurse Trimble. He takes care of the geezer. But I'd bet my broom handle that's only half the story. See, the geezer's supposed to be the boss. But Trimble never lets anyone near him. Claims it's for his health. Uh... I'm sure the geezer knows the combination too. Except fat chance talking to him alone. Only time Nurse Trimble leaves is to check the lab equipment he's got upstairs. Thanks for the help. Yeah, thanks, man. Oh. Another rune. Looks like Skeeves ain't coming back from his patrol. It's been six days now. Don't get me wrong, I ain't grieving because Skeeves and me didn't see eye to eye on many things. But it makes me sad because he swore he was bringing back a tremendous stash of coin he knew about in the dried out waterway. I figured I'd part him from all those coins and a few game cards. Card games. But that ain't to be. Who knows if that water's ever gonna 
comes back on, it may just flush them on out. But I doubt it. When you get off duty tonight, we need to drink a toast to old Skeebs. Gone to look into the water flow situation in the sewers. If you need access to the engine room while I'm away, talk to Nurse Tribble. He's the only other person with the door combination. knows which end of a knife is for stabbing, but not much else. What's that? Oh, stop complaining, old man. I'm giving you a legacy. What were the Hatters before I arrived? I'll tell you. A shadow of their former selves. The butt of numerous jokes, in fact. Why did the Hatter piss in his own hat? What did the Hatter do with his last bullet? And so on. The answers aren't worth repeating. Uh-huh. Leadership. That's what was missing. But with the embarrassing defeat at the hands of the Bottle Street Boys of all things. <laughs> there now. You mustn't become agitated. You'll inflame your arteries, which will only cause you unneeded agony. I can ease the pain, but only if you promise to behave yourself. No? Ah, that reminds me. I must see Jerome about getting more ox rush. I'm fresh out. Ah, I see. Audiographs required, okay. Uh, the effects of whale oil on the gastric humors, volume one. One benefit of this plague is the abundance of unclaimed bodies readily available to the inquisitive medical mind. I have been able to stimulate gastric function in addition to other organ activities through infusions of whale oil and the application of electrical impulses. I believe that such treatments could be applied to the living and that it might prolong life indefinitely. When my process is applied to the stomach and intestinal systems, digestion does in fact still occur, though the end product must be ev evacuated from the stomach through tubing and processed by my machinery before being recirculated to the appropriate organs. This was a tricky solution to come across, as my first inclination was to break the food down myself and bypass the natural process altogether. My subject has indicated that he no longer has a sense of taste, but that might be a mercy given what I'm feeding him these days. Okay, so yeah, not only is a uh, triple using him as a lab rat, he's also using him as a means of. Oh, there you go. Keynote there. We'll do that in a bit. But um, but yeah, no. Uh, not only is he uh using him as a lab rat, he's also using him to lead the uh the gang. 
uh, the effects of whale oil on the gastric tumors, volume two. My primary patient is no longer mobile. A loss of bone density coupled with the amount of organ maintenance that I have performed on a daily basis means that he will be bound to a chair or bed for the foreseeable future. While this greatly agitated the subject at first, he quickly grew too fatigued to offer further protest. I cleared a room close to my lab, but with access to the mill so he could continue to give orders. Update. After three weeks of regression, the yellowish sores have reappeared around implantation site C. I was holding out hope for full recovery, as the highest concentration of whale oil was pumped into this site in particular. Yeah, no, he's using him as a lab rat, and he's, uh... Yeah, no, uh, this is, this is not, this is not kosher. My name's Dowd. I'm looking for Lizzie Stride's missing engine coil. I'm giving you a chance to make a deal. It's a to me. Hmm. Yes, sir. Very reasonable offer. So he hasn't offered He's him anything he else. says you're in luck. We only need that engine coil because someone shut off the flow that turns our water wheel. I sent men into the sewers to restore the flow, and not one of them came back. But what stopped them won't be a problem for the famous Dowd, will it? When the water flows, I'll give you the engine coil. Here's the key to the sewer entrance, and it's a pleasure to do business with you, Mr. Dowd. The Hatters will behave themselves. As long as you keep your end of the bargain <coughs> down. Okay. I sent our head mechanic into the sewers to try and get the water flowing in the canals again, but he hasn't been heard from since. We've lost other men trying to investigate what happened to him from Trimble. This guy never made it back. Wonder if he's still down there. Warning, when replacing the whale oil tank that powers the pulmonary machine, you will have precious little time to do so. If you fail to be diligent and Mr. Hat perishes, you will release a toxic gas that will end your life and that of your fellow Hatters. I have, have a care from Trimble. Okay. So... Uh, little is known about Elizabeth Stride's origin origins, except that she hailed from Morlay, rumored to be the daughter of a seamstress and a traveling cloth merchant. Stride was forced to flee Morlay in her early years after strangling an abusive schoolmaster. She smuggled herself out of the city disguised as a boy and became a proud powder monkey on a naval ship. The ruse worked for a time, allowing her to see wonders and horrors that women in her society had always been denied. Her high spirit, charisma, and fierceness propelled her to the top of the pecking order in the small ship-bound community of children, and they grew loyal to her. Inevitably, her deception was discovered by the ship's surgeon when she was injured during a storm. Before the doctor could report her, she rallied her powder monkeys to toss the man overboard. A bloody fight ensued, but their brief mutiny was crushed and many of her followers were put down. In the chaos, Lizzie and a handful of loyal boys managed to abandon ship in the skiff. Afterward, they found employment for a few seasons with a cartographer working along the coasts of the Pandesian continent to map estuaries. Estuaries. There, the crew of children grew into experienced and savaged fighters. With the conclusion of the mapping expedition, the crew sailed back to Gristol. Once in, Dun once in Dunwall, Lily and her hardened friends carved a space for themselves in the street culture of the city. Their, nauti their nautical experience had them at home in the Renhaven River, a territory previously unclaimed by any gang. They recruited former sailors, pirates, and defectors from other gangs. She took an unlikely lover, a naval aristocrat, that arranged for her to carry merchant pa marine papers, giving her legitimacy in the eyes of the government and allowing her to sail through territory normally restricted to merchants. Some of those same powder monkeys from the early days years still follow her, helping pilot their cargo of boat that the Undyne up, down, and down the Renhaven on smuggling missions. As the leader of the Dead Eels, Lizzie has almost mythic reputation for ferocity. She files her teeth to points and is even rumored to have webbed toes. 
Her enemies fear her unpredictable violence as much as they despise her. Now the Hatters are not dealing with me, which is fine. Means I can loot to my heart's content. Oh, good hackfish. I have a feeling I'm going to run into some weepers. Stop. Nope. Worse. Those fucking things. Ow. Fuck you. Oh, there's more. Thank you kindly. Oh, this is the, uh... I see. I'll find out the combination for that later. I'm actually getting to use my lethal stuff, guys. Oh, someone's in trouble. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. She looks like she's dressed like the other ladies that were watching me. Ah, she's a brick more witch. Weird markings and shit. I was looking for my little boy. He's not well, and I fell down here. I hurt my leg. Yep. It is a fucking trap. The games are at each other's throats. Dowd is mired here. You'll have the time you need. And the portrait of the girl, is it? Excuse me, my lady. You're right. I should not have asked. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I see them. Royer and a few others went up ahead to the water control station to see why the water flow and stopped, but they haven't returned. There have been reports of strange noises and a few of our new workers fled for the exit. If someone doesn't come to relieve me soon, I'm leaving this place. I'm writing this so you have a record that I did not just abandon my station without just cause. Yeah, they're right there. Fucking called that. Leverage. Benefit. Pull power distance and speed are increased. Penalty and the mana cost for pull is increased. Ooh. I mean, that in itself is a fair cost, but at the same time... Oh, and there's another statue. Do I want to talk to her? Probably not. No. I'll take the sleep darts as well. I think I shall not talk to you. <sighs> is there a way to deal with these two without... Suck. Got him. And they're barely hidden, so that works. I doubt you'll be needing this again. No, you will not. Uh, and this one is Swift Striker. Stalker. Your your weapons are sheathed, your speed is boosted. Except they are never sheathed, so... Hey. 
nice. Oh, you are so useful. It's just outside and it's past that. So it is down there. Gotcha. And that, I think, is the last of them. Do not use the ventilating system until the fan motor is replaced. This thing nearly came off its drive shaft. I'll let you know when it's back up and running. Nope, can't even grab that. Okay, fine. Now it can go through. Nice. Take that key. Ah, another shrine. You're putting it together, aren't you? It's not easy. Delilah is exceedingly bright. Her coven is rising, with her as the night star to guide them. Change is coming, and Delilah has a plan. But do you, Dowd? And I don't mean stealing an engine coil or slitting an old man's throat. You're charging upriver, and I do believe you'll make it. But what will you do? with what you find there. All very good questions. One minute later. Someone took the wrench to the water flow control valve. Please have someone find it and return it to the water control station. Five minutes later. Hello, Hatter. Tremble. It's done. But I don't think you'll see your men again. Yep. Nope. The code is six six nine. Okay. Thank you. God, I guess you got what you came for. You snake. You and tremble. Peas in a pod. You can both rot. Okay. <laughs> Respect. We've got a business to run here. In other words, get out. Got it. I understand completely. Six. Red shoulder metal wiring. If this gets me closer to Delilah's throat, so be it. And then this is the sewer. Oh, there's something here. No fighting. Wonder how long that'll last. It's a very good question. And I never quite found that ring. Or did I? I'm not sure anymore. Uh, I'll take one more look at the uh, at that apartment because I've got the key now, so I can open that cabinet, and then we'll probably just move on. Oh my god, the engine combination was in here all the whole fucking time, <laughs> Mr. Hat. I've completed the final connections between the mill apparatus and the engine. 
The power generated should be far more than required to put the mill back into full operation, but I cannot vouch for the reliability of the engine itself. Therefore, I am traveling into the sewers to find what the water has been diverting away from the district. It is infinitely preferable to have this water flow restored, which will power our mill perpetually, perpe in perpetuity. Should the need arise to reach the engine during my absence, I have set the combination to the gate to 669. I will return soon. Welp. As for the ring, I guess I am uh, so well. Five minutes later. Oh. Mm -hmm. They killed him. <laughs> oh, wow, what? Fuck! I didn't sign up for this! So! That happened! <laughs> I dealt with the Brigmore Witch Scout. I restored water to the canal. Uh, I didn't kill anybody. Three bodies were found. Overall low chaos. I didn't find all of the bone charms. I did, however, find all of the corrupted charms. Uh, and, of course, I missed one rune, and we know which rune that was. Uh, I visited both outsider shrines, and I collected a fuck ton of money. And then we got attacked by, uh, by witches. And as this is low chaos, and I didn't have any more sleep darts, it's... Well... I could have used the choke dust, actually. Ah! That's not good. Okay, and back to what the original was. We found all but one ruin. The one ruin we couldn't get to because we need a fucking wedding ring and I don't know where it is. Uh, bone charms, we found four out of five. Corrupted charms, we found all of them. We also found all of the outsider shrines and we found 2,961 coin out of 2,520. So that's not terrible. It's not too shabby at all. But on that note, we're going to leave it here. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like or subscribe if you did. If not, Leave a comment below letting me know what I can do to improve. And as always, until the next time, guys. Ciao.